everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I am bringing you my mid-April wrap up. Now so far in the month of April, I have been kind of on a roll as far as reading goes. In the first like week of April, I was doing really, really awesome. I finished like three books in the first three days of the month, did really well up until probably about the 10th and then totally fell off the wagon. So I do actually have nine books to talk about in this video, but a lot of them I've read a week or more ago. So bear with me if my thoughts are not the most coherent. It's been a long month already. Before we get into the video, if you're new here and you're not already, be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So the first book that I completed in the month of April was The Conference of the Birds by Ransom Riggs, and this is the fifth book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. Now, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children started out as a trilogy, and it has since been extended into a six book series. So the first three books follow our main character, Jacob, and he was really close to his grandfather, but after his grandfather passes away, Way, Jacob learns about this whole life that his grandfather had with these peculiar children and he actually goes and meets them and learns with them and has his own abilities and essentially saves the world. Well the first three books in the series that original trilogy is set in Wales and this next three books the second trilogy is set in America so this is the fifth book Technically the second book in the second trilogy, continuing where the fourth book, A Map of Days, left off. I hope that was confusing enough for you. Now, it had been a really, really long time since I read A Map of Days, probably a year and a half since I read it, and I did read a detailed summary before I went into this one, and I feel like that was enough to kind of get me reacquainted with the world. We did get a little bit of summarization in the beginning of this book, but not enough to be boring or repetitive or info dumpy, so I appreciated that. And in general, I just loved being back in this world with these characters. I absolutely love all of them. There are some wonderful twists and turns in this book, and I felt like the plot progressed really well. I did not feel that second book slump that you tend to get with middle books in series, so I was really grateful for that. Loved this one, just like I've been loving this entire series, and I'm gonna be so, so sad when this is over. And also, the epilogue of this was really, really intriguing, and it makes me interested and excited for what's to come. And overall, I wound up giving this one a four out of five stars. Next, I completed The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Now, this book follows our main character, Monty, and Monty is set off to go on this grand tour of Europe, and he is going to be traveling with his sister, Felicity, and his best friend and crush, Percy, and they just get into a whole bunch of shenanigans as they tour around the continent. Now, I feel like I am behind the times on this one. This was really popular back in like 2017 when it came out and in 2018. I know that I'm late to the party. I've had this on my shelf for who even knows how long, but I'm so glad I finally got to it. I really, really enjoyed it. I listened to this one on audio and it was super quick to get through, even though it is kind of a chunky book in and of itself. I love travel, so I loved getting to see and learn about all the different destinations that they go to in the novel. The characters are phenomenal and they get into some wacky shenanigans in here, so it was laugh out loud funny a lot of the way through. There's definitely some drama in here, some romance that was just to die for. I absolutely loved Felicity as a character and I know that there is a sequel slash continuation that centers on Felicity. Definitely going to be picking that one up and I would actually love to reread this already. It was just such a fun time. Everything that I needed at the time. Why well, I'm giving this one a four out of five stars as well. I also forgot to mention that Monty is actually bisexual, so that was nice to get to see a bisexual male main character. I feel like we don't see that often enough. The next book that I read in the month of April was Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed. This is a relatively new release. It came out in February of this year and I got it in my book of the month. And I actually read this one sooner than I do usually read my book of the month because I went ahead and filmed a backlist breakdown for Becky Albertalli. So in that video, I go over every one of Becky Albertalli's books and what I thought of them. If you have not seen it, I will link a card up above. This book follows our two main characters, Jamie and Maya, and they both meet when they are political canvassing for the same state senate candidate. And they form a friendship, fall in love. There's a lot of political background in this as well. I've heard a lot of people call it a politically charged romance, and I think that perfectly describes the vibe of this book. Now, for a contemporary, this one is really chunky. It's about 450 pages long. And you guys know that I don't read too many physical books, but I read this physically in two days, which was incredible to me. This was was so cute and so fun. I am a huge, huge fan of Becky Albertalli, and this is my first time ever reading from Aisha Saeed, but after finishing it, I will definitely be reading from her again. I absolutely loved our two main characters, Jamie and Maya. There is so much diversity in this novel and a lot of really serious
various topics are covered, but I think that they're all done in a really respectful way and just balanced really well with the political canvassing part of it versus the romance. Everything was really well balanced, really well thought out. You can tell that this kind of a story is really, really close to the author's hearts. And if you read into the author's note in the end of this, there is a little more background on how they got the idea for the story, which was really, really interesting. So overall, as a slightly more serious and yet fun and cute summer romance contemporary, I think that this was just incredible. If you haven't gotten to it yet and you're interested, don't be intimidated by the size because I totally flew through it. I wound up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I completed was I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Now Michelle McNamara has since passed away, but she was an investigative journalist that did a lot of work revolving around the Golden State Killer, and that's what this book is all about. It's a lot of her notes, things that she discovered, and a little tiny bit of memoir mixed in with that, talking about her journey over like three decades trying to find the Golden State Killer. Now you can definitely tell tell in this novel that the author really had a passion for this case and trying to figure out who this guy was. Michelle McNamara was actually the one that coined the term Golden State Killer, so I thought that was really interesting. And there has since been an arrest in this case, but Michelle McNamara actually passed away before the man was arrested, so she never got to see justice be served. But even throughout the book, she says that it's okay with her if she doesn't get to see it or if she is not the one that breaks the case that she just wants justice to be served for all of these victims and she does a really really thorough job of explaining the whole situation right from the beginning when he was known as the East Area Rapist and just in general there is a lot of work that went into this book and I really enjoyed the format of this book too obviously there is a lot of facts and it's all nonfiction, but it is told in such a captivating way that it just it almost feels like fiction and it just makes you want to keep turning the pages I listened to it on audio really enjoyed doing it that way and I actually picked up this book because I was doing a challenge and one of the prompts is to read a book about a subject that you know nothing about. So I knew absolutely nothing about the Golden State Killer before reading this and now I feel like I have a really good grasp on the case in general and I would definitely be interested in looking more into it. So it was a really really good starting place for the case. I was afraid that it would be a little bit over my head but I definitely didn't feel that way by the end of it. So if you are interested in true crime, nonfiction, the Golden State Killer, this is one that I would recommend if you haven't picked it up already. Why well, not giving this one a four out of five stars. The next book that I completed on audio was All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This book is a World War II historical fiction novel that follows our two main characters, Maury Lore and Werner. They are strangers at the beginning of the novel. They do not know each other, but they wind up coming together and changing each other's lives throughout the course of the war. Now, Maury Lore lives in Paris with her father and she is actually blind. So we get to learn about how she is trying to be involved in the war effort and do her part as she can, even with this disability. And Werner is a young boy from Germany who actually is really talented at building and fixing things. And he winds up getting recruited, enlisted to go to the school where they're gonna try to track down the resistance. And then eventually the two characters come together. Now I actually had this book on my most recent five-star predictions video. And unfortunately it was not a five-star read for me, but I did very much enjoy it still. I do think that it's my own fault that I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have because I listened to it on audio. That was a fine way to do it, but I found myself personally just kind of zoning in and out at times and that hindered my enjoyment of the book a little bit. I feel like if I had taken the time to slow down and read it physically that I might have enjoyed it a little bit more, but I did find with the audio that it kind of breezed over some of the really big scenes in the novel and that did hinder my enjoyment. But in general, I did really enjoy the story. I, I do enjoy World War II historical fiction, but a lot of them tend to be kind of the same story over and over. And I felt like this one was really unique and captivating. I absolutely loved getting into our two characters. It's definitely a deep character study of these two individuals. And I just really enjoyed it overall. I feel like a ton of people have already read this one. I think it came out in 2014, so it's pretty backlist. But if you enjoy World War II historical fiction and you haven't picked it up yet, maybe you want to give this one a shot. I wound up giving this one a four out of five stars as well. The next book that I have to talk about is called I Am Here Now by Barbara Botner. I actually received an e-arc of this book through Edelweiss and it is set to publish on May 19th. This book is set in the 1960s and it follows our main character Maisie who is growing up in the Bronx. She has a horrible relationship with her abusive mother and to escape that she turns to art. She winds up meeting this other young woman and her mother who are artists and she tries to escape that way. 
Now, I feel like I thought that this book was going to have more of an emphasis on Maisie coming into her own as a painter, when really it took an emphasis on Maisie and her mother. So I feel like if I had known that going in that I would have enjoyed this book a lot more, but since I went into it with different expectations, it again hindered my enjoyment and I found that I really didn't like this book that much. The story is told in verse and I did like that aspect of it, but I don't feel like it would have changed the story all that much if it was just told in a regular prose format. So it was kind of just okay there for me. It didn't really make a difference one way or the other. Another thing is the historical setting. This book is set in the 1960s, but you couldn't really tell that just reading through the story and it didn't add anything special to the narrative, which was kind of disappointing. And finally, none of the characters were likable in my opinion. The main character, her mom, their brother, the other girl, the mom. I really didn't like any of the main characters and didn't find myself attached to any of them or wanting to root for them. So in general, now this is by no means the worst book that I've ever read. I mean, it did intrigue me enough to make it all the way to the end. I'm really appreciative of the arc, but unfortunately this book just was not for me and I wound up giving it a two out of five stars. The next book that I completed was Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. So this is a sequel slash companion novel to the Bromance book club. And in that novel, we follow our two main characters, Gavin and Thea. Well, in Undercover Bromance, we are following Thea's sister, Liv, and another member of the book club whose name is Brayden Mack. So this is their story, getting to know each other, falling in love. And there is this big wig hotshot in the Nashville restaurant industry who is taking advantage of women and they are out to shut him down. Now, I will say right off the bat that I did enjoy Bromance Book Club slightly more than Undercover Bromance, but I still really, really enjoyed it. One of the best things I thought about the Romance Book Club was that it moved super fast. And I felt like the same way about Undercover Bromance. It just absolutely flew by. It was a fun, quick romance that I really enjoyed. This one had obviously a little bit more of a darker element to it since they are battling against this guy that has been sexually abusing women. So there is a little bit more substance to it that way. And there's also a big character secret that is revealed that's kind of darker. So there's a little bit darker elements in this one than in the first one, but you still definitely got to see a really cute, fun romance that I really enjoyed. These are, like I said, super quick to get through. So if you're looking for a fun, cute adult romance, maybe pick them up. I will also say though, these are incredibly open door. You are practically in the bedroom with these people. So if you're not comfortable with that, maybe shy away from them. But if you don't mind that, or you can skip over those scenes, then you might enjoy these and go ahead and read them because the third one is going to come out later this year, I think in October or November. And I'm really, really excited for it. I gave Undercover Bromance a four out of five stars. Next, I picked up In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. I actually started this one during the Read with Friends live show, which goes up every week on Jacqueline at Weeby Book and channel. If you're not following her, I will leave a link to her channel down below. I love her. She's great. But we are starting a weekly series read with friends live show. It's going to be coming every Thursday at 7pm Eastern time. So convert that however you want to. I'm in Central, so it's 6 p.m. for me. And essentially, we go on there. The first 30 minutes, we talk about what we're going to be reading. Then we all mute for an hour and read, come back on for 30 minutes after, and talk about what we just read. And you guys are welcome to join in, read with us in the background as well. It's a really fun time, so just shameless plug there every Thursday evening if you're looking for something to do while you're stuck at home during quarantine. But in five years, follows our main character, Danny, And at the beginning of the novel, she is going in for this job interview. Her dream job she's always wanted and she's very very confident that she's going to get the job. Her life has pretty much always been planned out and she knows exactly what's going to happen. During the interview you know they ask her that age-old question where do you see yourself in five years? She tells them exactly what she's going to be up to and then later that evening after the interview she winds up getting engaged. Again she knew it was going to happen. She's really happy. She goes to bed that night and wakes up five years in the future. Completely different man in her bed. Different apartment. Different ring on her her finger. She has no idea how she wound up there. Is this a dream? Is this real? What's going on? And when she wakes up from that, she's actually back in her life in the present day with the original man, original ring, blah, blah, blah. So from there, she's trying to determine, I don't think this was a dream. What does this mean? How do I meet this other guy? What is going on? Now, this is another one. This was super fast. It's not 
even 250 pages so it was really really quick to get through and I did enjoy my time reading it but in general I don't have a ton of strong feelings about this in general. I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed our characters. I liked the way that it unfolded and the friendships and relationships that we got to watch develop. I it, like I said I enjoyed it overall but I just don't have a ton of strong feelings about it. It is one that I will probably always regard with some pleasure and I will look back on it and remember that I enjoyed it but I might not remember a lot of the details. So again not too much to say about this one but if you're looking for a contemporary romance that is fast and has a little bit of a darker twist to it maybe pick this one up. I wound up giving this one again a four out of five stars. And the last book that I have completed so far in the month of April is The End of Your Life Book Club by Will Schwalbe. Now this is a memoir kind of telling of Will and his mother Marianne was diagnosed with cancer and Will would accompany her to all of her chemo treatments. Well while they were there they started a book club so they would always pick the same book and read it talk to each other about it and so we get a little bit of how that went a little bit of a biography about Will's mother and a little bit of a memoir on Will himself. Now this is one that I went into it with pretty high hopes and unfortunately they were just not met. I really enjoyed the concept of this novel and I felt like it was really interesting and it was going to be something that I was really drawn to as a book lover obviously but unfortunately it just did not do it for me. A lot of what I felt like I had a problem with in this novel was that it was all about how privileged this family is and it all came off as incredibly pretentious in my opinion. Obviously, I hate saying that about anybody, but it just didn't sit right with me. We learn a lot about the mother and how she was really passionate about a lot of different issues. She did a lot of work in Afghanistan and throughout the Middle East and just generally talked about a lot of the things she's passionate about. And I should have really enjoyed her and thought good of her because of that, but it just came off in such like a hero kind of archetype and it just did not sit right with me. And all throughout the book, Will kept talking about these big name, big wig people that the family just so happened to know. And they were friends with all of these higher up people. And it almost just sounded like bragging. And it just, it didn't sit right with me just in general. And the book club portion itself, just to be completely honest, the books that they read would not be the books that I read, which is totally fine in and of itself. But I believe that all throughout the novel, there's only one book that they talk about that they read that I have also read and I didn't particularly enjoy it. So just being at such a disconnect with their kind of reading styles and I guess their lifestyles in general, Again, I just didn't enjoy it because of that. I would never pick up half of the books that they read and so that immediately just kind of put me at a distance from the family. So just in general, this one was unfortunately a miss for me. If you are interested, pick it up, maybe try the first little bit and see if the writing style and the vibe of it kind of flow with you. Otherwise, you might wanna skip this one. It wasn't my favorite. I wound up giving it a 2.5 out of five stars. So that is it for everything that I've read so far in the month of April. I am currently in the middle of a few books as always. I am reading the ebook of The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. I am about a third of the way through that one and really, really enjoying it so far. It's been the only thing that has gotten me out of this little reading slump that I've been in. So hoping to finish that one and maybe even continue on with the trilogy throughout the month of April. I am also reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, obviously the fourth book in the Harry Potter series. I am at page 193, so I have quite a bit of this to go and I'm hoping to start chugging along through it continuing throughout the month of April. And I don't feel like getting it down but I am still reading 112263 by Stephen King. I'm about 500 pages into that. I have just not felt like picking it up lately but hopefully fingers crossed I will get back in a really solid reading mood and finish it up either at the end of April or the beginning of May. But that is it for everything I've read so far in the month of April. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know what your favorite book that you have read so far in April has been. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!